Uh, I'm glad you all made it. I drove straight from uh, Mallory Town, and it was a bit of a white knuckle drive going along the 401. So, thankfully, thanks to God, I made it safely. So, I'm glad you are here safely as well, and we're here to celebrate uh, worship here on this fourth Sunday of 2023. Uh, we're pleased that you're worshiping with us from wherever you are. Uh, we are celebrating the Lord's Supper during the service today, so for those of you who are watching us online, if you wish to take part, please make sure you have your beverage of choice and a cracker or bread with you before we begin. Our in-person services of worship, everybody should have gotten a little communion cup. Hopefully you got one when you came in. It has the, you peel back the top and it has the wafer and then you peel back the second layer and it has the juice. Um, and our online options, of course, will continue for those who are worshiping from home. Um, happy, birth, happy birthday today um, to John Thomas, whose birthday is January 31st. So happy birthday to John. And remember, though, everyone, that if you want to share birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, anything to celebrate, grandchildren, uh, please let us know because we'd love to celebrate them with you. So you can just email me if you're worried about a birthday and you're worried about just send me the month and the day. You don't have to send the year <laughs> and I'll be happy to share it with everyone. Uh, the February prayer calendar is available for pickup at the back of the sanctuary or on our website, so please make sure you do take one. Our prayers are with the family of Alan McKenzie of our congregation. He passed away on November 29th of 2022, and the service and celebration of his life was held here in the sanctuary at First Presbyterian Church, so please keep Alan's family in your prayers. Uh, we'd also like to send our deepest condolences to Marianne Bim and to Mark Leslie on the death of Marianne's brother Richard Bim in Oakville. It was very sudden. It was uh, Friday, I believe. Uh, the memorial service is scheduled for Saturday, February 11th at, at the funeral home, Waukesha's Funeral Home in Guelph. So please keep Marianne, Mark, and Richard's family in your prayers. It's a very sad time for them. On the Good news, our congratulations go out to Anne Awori of our congregation, who is starting work as the event coordinator at the downtown Brockville BIA. So congratulations, Anne. <laughs> great news, great job. I know I was talking to Jasmine, and she said, oh, she'll be a big asset for us. So, <laughs> um, Next Sunday, February 5th, is Loaves and Fishes Sunday here at First Church, where we'll be continuing to support the work of this restaurant with our donations of money and time. Uh, food donations, there's a basket at the back of the sanctuary. Uh, white and chocolate cake mixes and coffee are great choices. They always need them. And if you want to make a donation through your offering envelope, please just mark it, um, uh, 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 loaves and fishes, just on the envelope. For those who are worshiping with us here in person, it was worth it because we're having coffee hour this afternoon after church. So please join us for coffee hour and we'll have time for food and fellowship. Um, speaking of food, um, the next men's breakfast is on Saturday, February 11th at 8.15 at the Shadow Brock. Uh, please contact Quentin Robinson if you would like to attend and invite friends and neighbors for good food and fellowship. Uh, this coming Wednesday, February 1st, is our next PA Day camp. Uh, please invite any families that you know to attend for a day of fun and crafts and games. We're collecting items for the Cooperative Care Center. Um, the need is continuing and ongoing for their guests there. So please see the bulletin for more details. And also a final reminder that reports for the annual report, if you're responsible for a report, you better have it in by January 31st. You can drop it off at the office or you can send it by email. And, drum roll please, um, please save the date for February 21st as we are again, after a couple of years, planning to hold the Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper here in the church hall. Um, we will make a list available to sign up for donations of food items for, supper, for the supper. And please stay tuned for more details as we continue to get all the information finalized. Uh, there are many more items in the bulletin. Please take note of those of interest to you. 
I'd also encourage you to check our social media accounts and our website for the latest information on what's happening here at First Presbyterian Church. And now on this snowy, wintry Sunday morning, let us approach God in thanks and praise, starting with our call to worship, which is in your order of service. So please read responsibly with me. God calls us to seek justice. Let Christ's love for the poor and hungry fill the earth. God calls us to show kindness. Let Christ's light shine in places of brokenness and despair. God calls us to walk humbly in the Spirit. Let us join the work of the kingdom in humility and hope. Called, blessed, and inspired, let us worship God together. I invite you to uh, stand if you wish or remain seated if you prefer to sing our opening hymn, number 291, Thou Whose Almighty Word. And I invite you to remain standing as we uh, approach God in prayer, which is, uh, please read responsibly. God of wisdom and blessing, on this cold day, we come into the warmth of your presence. Here we find shelter in the strength of your promises. Here we find welcome in your tender care. Grateful for the protection you provide, thankful for the comfort of your community, we offer our praise to you. For you give blessing when the world condemns. You bring freedom when culture confines. Embrace us with your love in this hour of worship as we offer you our love in return. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Thank you, Karen. We are blessed to have so many talented musicians in our congregation who are so willing to share their gifts with us. And uh, those are uh, uh, called the small pipes, which are a smaller version of the bagpipes. And they're beautiful to hear. So thank you for that. I now invite you to join in the prayer of confession, which is in your order of service, and we will read it responsively. God of the ages, we confess the world's wisdom attracts us in advertisements and arguments. We fail to measure messages according to the wisdom in your word. We find calls to do justice too demanding. For the world has taught us to look to our own interests first. Forgive us, we pray. Renew us with your mercy so that we may mock more humbly with you and each other day by day. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Though God knows our failings, forgiveness is ours in Jesus Christ. Rejoice and be glad for his renewing love. Amen. And now let us come in prayer again to hear, uh, to seek understanding in God's word. Holy God, your people turn to your word for truth and guidance in every age. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire our understanding of your scripture read and interpreted today. Help us hear the truth for our lives and our times through Christ, your living word. Amen. Now I invite Dave's call to come forward. David is reading our uh, responsive psalm and our scripture. Good morning. Good morning. Our psalm selection is chapter 15. Hear the word of the Lord. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell on your holy hill? Those who walk blamelessly and do what is right and speak the truth from their hearts, who do not slander with their tongues and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors, in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand with their oath even to their hurt, who do, do not lend, lend money, money at interest, interest and, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those, Those who do these things shall never be moved. <laughs>
gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and our minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I hope you will believe me when I say that we work hard to make sure you have a good experience of worship here on Sundays. Kathleen, Office Marianne, the chancel choir and our musicians, the sound tech, our videographer, all of us who are responsible for planning what happens here on Sundays think about every act of worship, the prayer, the songs, the prelude and postlude, uh, the readings and the sermon. We do all this with you in mind. When I preach, I try to avoid these heavy theological words and keep my message as simple and direct as possible. And it's great when after a service one of you might say to me, that sermon was really helpful. Or, I was so moved by the music today. So responses like that tell those of us who plan on Sundays, plan our worship services, that our efforts have paid off. And we're offering you the sort of worship experience that you want and that you truly need. But that's not good enough for God. Because the intent of worship is not to satisfy our expectations and desires and needs. We don't, it's not to entertain us. The emphasis of worship is not on us, it's on God. We have gathered here to focus upon the God who has, in Jesus Christ, focused upon us. And Sunday is the day we respond in prayer, in praise, and proclamation to the God who continues to seek relationship with us. Now, if I want to know what you want, all I need to do is ask. And for some of you, I do not need to ask. You are not shy about telling me. I can send out a survey and poll the congregation. What hymns do you like? What things do you think are important in worship? And you'll tell me. We could take a vote. And we could go with the will of the majority. But ask, what does God want from us? And it's more difficult to maybe get a direct answer because God is, well, God. And that means there is a big gap between what we know about God and what we do not know. I'm sure just in this one congregation, and those of you who are watching online, there are differing opinions about God. And I can also tell you that your opinion about God will change over time as you grow in your faith. I can certainly tell you that my opinion or my view or perspective of God was different before I went to seminary than after I went to seminary. And it is still continuing to change and mature as I grow with you. So maybe that's why even though this is a church, we focus more on what do, what do people expect? What do you expect? Rather than the more difficult question, what does God want? Along comes Micah. Micah is considered one of the 12 minor prophets of the Hebrew Bible, and he was a contemporary of the prophets Isaiah, Amos, and Hosea. He prophesied during the reigns of kings Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah of Judah. And in this Sunday's lesson, which has to be about the only verse from the prophet Micah that's widely known and just as widely ignored, Micah directly asks, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? In other words, what does God want from our worship? Now, the prophet suggests some possible answers to the question. Burnt offerings of calves, herds of rams, rivers of olive oil, 
sacrifice of my oldest child. Well, that seems a bit extreme. Praise songs, shouts of all men, or processions behind the cross. What does God want? Now here, you probably expect Micah to go into this big, long, ponderous discussion of all the possible divine requirements for right worship. The Bible, this one's not a big one, but you know, the Bible's a big book. There's a lot in it. And God does lots of talking in the Bible. And the church has had over 2,000 years to debate all these matters. So you're probably thinking, oh, here she goes. This is going to take a while. So stay awake. But no. Micah is very direct in giving his answer. What does God want? You already know what is good and what does the Lord require of you to act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Sometimes we complain that God's will is obscure and difficult to comprehend. I don't know about you, but I think the words in the text today are pretty clear. More likely, the greater issue is that we know God's will all too well, but we find it difficult to obey. Or maybe we just don't want to obey. The prophet asked the rhetorical question, what does God want from our worship? What does the Lord require of us? Well, Micah responds by saying that it's how we re respond in our lives Monday through Saturday. The prophet makes, you see, makes the test for our worship on Sunday that what we do all week long outside of church. Micah tells us to act justly. Do not think, just think about justice, but do not, or do not wait for somebody else, wait for the law courts or the government to be, ju to be just. We need to act justly. If we see that people are being oppressed, and if we see that people are being marginalized, we need to advocate, and that's one of the things the church is doing, has done very well, especially during the pandemic, is advocate for those who are on the margins, who have been left out, who are poor, and who have been neglected for our society for too long, and the church has spoken up and said, this is wrong, and held the government to account. So this is acting justly. Love mercy. Now, you heard me talk about how our society tells us to focus on our own self-interest, our own self-promotion, and looking out for number one. But God tells us to love and be merciful to those around us, especially the ones that we think don't deserve it. Walk humbly with your God. Now, this is kind of a hard one because, you know, you're sort of thinking to yourself, well, if I'm trying to be humble, then I'm not really humble, right? But in moving from asking, what do I want out of my worship here on Sunday to what does God want, you are, in fact, moving towards humility. You're not putting yourself first. You're beginning to realize that we don't make the rules for our relationship with God. Sometimes, those who see themselves as doing justice do so in ways that are, well, less than humble. They see themselves as holding the right position on the right attitude, on, the, on an issue. They think they're right. They're right, and nobody else is right. And they think they can impose their will on other people. For good and just and righteous, but opinionated people like that, to walk humbly can be a challenge. To be humble means you need to step back and listen to what other people are saying. What does God want from us? Micah tells us in no uncertain terms. 
And they are not what we do here on a Sunday morning, although I'm certainly glad you are all here on a Sunday morning. But it's what we do in our lives in the world through Monday and Saturday is what God wants from us. God doesn't require that you have the right attitude or that your heart is in the right place. God instead just acts, expects you to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. What does God want from us? Thankfully, God loves us enough to tell us. And just so you know, those of us who plan the services on Sunday will continue to work hard to make them meaningful for you. Amen. Let us pray. Foolish God, you are wiser than we know. Where we find struggle, you create blessing. Thank you for your creative love, love that transforms our living. O living word, walk beside us each day on paths of justice, mercy, humbleness, and love. Amen. Our next hymn is number 314 in your order of service or in the blue hymn book, God is Love, Come Heaven Adoring. You're welcome to sing and stand in body or in spirit to sing this hymn. Please be seated. And let us come to God today with our prayers, prayers for ourselves, prayers for each other, prayers for our church, and prayers for our world. Blessed are you, most holy God, for you give release to the captives and food to the hungry. 
Bless us as we hunger and thirst for your justice and righteousness. May all who are needy find their hope in you. Compassionate God, you, we thank you for your mercy. You give pardon for our sin and call us to forgive others. Embrace with your renewing grace those who are resentful or discouraged. Help us serve as instruments of reconciliation when discord or conflict arises, especially as we work toward healing and reconciliation with our indigenous siblings. Righteous God, we thank you for your justice. You watch over all who suffer and empower your people to act for good. Bless the work of our church and its partners to advocate for justice and dignity in our communities and in our world, especially for people of color, immigrants, and marginalized people. Keep safe all who live under threat of violence or struggle for life necessity. Caring God, we thank you for your comfort. You strengthen us when we are weak and pick us up when we fall. Bless us as we support and care for one another in this community. Surround all who mourn with the warmth of your love and the light of our hope in Jesus Christ. God of new life, we give thanks for your enlivening spirit. You give courage to the persecuted and inspire the weary. Bless us as we strive to make a difference in a as a community in Christ's name. Unite your church by the power of your Holy Spirit and strengthen our common witness with the gifts you offer us through Jesus Christ. And now we gather our prayers into one voice and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Prophet Micah declared that God calls us to do justice, love kindness, and walk with humble hearts. So we offer our gifts today simply, trusting that God will use them and us for the world that God loves so much. There are many ways you can give to support the work of the congregation. There's online ways, um, there's mail, there's e-transfers, and we do have offering envelopes and visitor envelopes available in the pews for people to use. And whatever you give, however much you can give, we thank you for your generosity and your support of this congregation as we continue to do the work of the good news of Jesus Christ. So now you're welcome to stand if you're able to sing our offering praise song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God of life, from you all blessings flow. Bless these gifts so that through them acts of kindness, justice, and mercy will flow. And we ask you to bless our lives so the world may see in us signs of your kingdom at work in the church and the community. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. We now come to the sacrament of the Holy Communion, the Lord's table. This is not my table. This is not First Presbyterian Church's table. It's God's table. 
And God invites us all, whether we have a little bit of faith (coughs) or a lot, to come and feast at the table and gather together in community. So the order of ser- the, uh, the, the uh, sacrament of Holy Communion is printed in your order of service, so you can just follow along with me. <coughs> the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, <coughs> creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. In his baptism and table fellowship, he took his place with sinners. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, O God, and on these gifts of bread and wine, Make them for us to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit at your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, eat of it and rejoice. The blood of Christ, the cup of heaven, drink of it and rejoice.
I now invite you to join with me in the responsive prayer after communion, which is in your order of service. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us in Christ, and given us a foretaste of this heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. Send us out now in the power of the Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 467 in your order of service and in the hymn book. Praise my soul, the God who crowns you. And again, you're invited to stand in body or in spirit to sing this No matter where life takes you, God is with you. And go from this place today filled with joy, trusting the blessings promised by our God, the bestower of faithful love. And as you leave today, may the God of justice strengthen your will to serve. May the Christ of compassion inspire your heart to love. And may the Holy Spirit walk with you in wisdom this day and always. Amen. Thank you.